Hello and welcome back to Power Platform Answers, the channel where we dive into your most pressing questions about the Microsoft Power Platform. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated on all things Power Platform. And if you have any questions you would like for us to answer, please leave us a comment or send us an email at powerplatformanswers at hitachisolutions.com. Later in the video, I'm going to update our guide to Power Platform security with some recent changes that will make your security management easier. But first, your questions. Let's get started. Today we're tackling two hot topics from the Power Users community. First up, we have a question about security roles not being automatically assigned in Dataverse. Let's break it down. The question says, we've created teams in Power Platform and assigned security roles to the team. AD group is configured in Teams, which has users to whom roles should be assigned, but this isn't working and we have to assign the roles to the users manually. I've checked security role settings and it's configured to direct access level and team privileges. Sounds like you have the pieces right if you've selected direct user access level and team privileges on the role. A couple of things to consider. Number one, teams-based security doesn't mean the role is assigned to the user. You won't see that role show up on the user's role linked to the user record. They inherit the permissions of the team in context of the team. If you're expecting to see a role associated with the user based on team membership, it doesn't work that way. And secondly, it's important to assign appropriate permissions to the team role. User level permissions in context of the team means anything the team owns or the users on the team will be able to see. It's very important to not give the team too much permission, like never give the team a, a system admin role, for exa example. Also consider that infra AD based teams users don't show up until they log in the first time. So based on that, if the users on the team and the team has a role and the users aren't getting the expected permissions, check your team role permissions. They're probably not set correctly. Now on to the second question about showing users, showing data to users based on the region. is They say, we've been tasked to set up security so that users can only see data based on regions. The region column field is listed on all tables for the model-driven application. We have also users that must still be able to see all records no matter what region. What's the best business unit security role designed to accomplish this requirement? The best way to accomplish this is either through teams or business units, either will accomplish your goal. My preference is business units as it will be managed automatically. Each user is assigned to a primary business unit by creating business units for your regions and assigning users to the appropriate business unit. The system can automatically grant access to these records. So let's say you're talking about accounts. You have a West region sales team and you have an East region sales team. All salespeople in the West region are in the West business unit. I grant a role to the salespeople that gives them business unit level read access. For any record owned by someone in the West region, they will see it. But if someone in the East region business unit owns the record, salespeople in the West business unit won't see it. The key is who owns the record. If you assign records appropriately, assign them to salespeople or people in the region, and you have the business unit structure defined, the system will automatically control what they do and do not see. If I don't want to assign records directly to individuals, there's also the option to assign to the team that's automatically managed for each business unit. So if I have West Business Unit, I will see a team called West Business Unit. So I can assign the record to the business unit team, giving everybody in the business unit access to it. Alternatively, you could also set up teams for regions and assign people to the region teams and manage the teams manually, but I prefer the business unit approach as the system will automatically manage that for you. You also mentioned that you have some people who need to see everything. This approach still supports that as you can define a role that has a higher level read access, like parent-child business unit uh, or organization. For example, I can give the sales managers a security role that provides organization level read access. So thanks for the questions. Uh, and again, these are from the Power Users community. And I recommend you all check that out. If you have any questions you'd like for us to address on Power Platform Answers, please send us an email or leave a comment uh, on this video below. Okay, let's shift gears and talk a little bit about some pretty significant changes in Dataverse security. These changes affect some of the recommendations that I've made over the past 15 years, and I think will make things easier to manage security. So first up, we have 
giving a role permissions needed to log in and run a model-driven app. For about forever, the best practice has been to copy an existing role when creating a new one because it was virtually impossible to add all the permissions that people needed to successfully log in to a model-driven app when creating a role from scratch because of the labyrinth of permissions needed to create a role just to log in. There's all these different permissions needed. We now have a single click when creating a new role that gives it the basic permissions needed to run an app. And that basically eliminates the need to copy a role or to start with something like the basic user role. So if I click on this checkbox when I'm creating a role and say, include app opener privilege privileges for running model driven apps. That's really all I've got to do. And that is a very welcome change because again, it was just a hassle to copy a role. And sometimes you've got things you didn't want in the role and had to take them out and then things got messed up. Now it's just as simple as just check the box. Next we have modern business units. So typically, if you had someone like Frank here, Frank uh, would be in a business unit or Frank is in a business unit and you could give him any role you wanted from that business unit. And so then if a security role limited him to that business unit, based on his role, he would see the records in that business unit, but not the other business unit. And sure, you could give them elevated permission, such as parent-child business unit or organization business unit, but there's a lot of situations where people might have roles and responsibilities across different divisions. So this fictitious company has an electrical division and they've got a plumbing division. And with modern business units, they provide a more flexible and streamlined approach to managing user and data access. They basically decouple security roles and business units to handle more advanced, what you call might call matrix scenarios. So in this case, Frank is the manufacturing manager role at the electrical division, but he also is helping be the safety manager for the plumbing division. And traditionally, it was very difficult to do that. You essentially would have to use sharing access teams, other things like that, which are still an option, but they're a hassle they're very manual. So now, essentially, I can give him the manufacturing manager role from business unit one and the safety manager role from business unit two. You can give him both roles and that way he will get the permissions that both those roles give them in each business unit. These updates are designed to enhance the security while simplifying the process because this makes it significantly less, less uh, challenging. Where you have people, a matrix of responsibility, this person is sees products from this division and they see machines from this division and they are have access to these accounts this makes this so much easier. So that wraps up today's episode. If you found this helpful, please give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, keep exploring the Power Platform.